so um, parametric equations are the Mario of functions, okay? So if you're looking at an equation and it's a function, you know, it has to follow that rule that it passes the vertical line test. But there's other ones that are functions that are not functions that we can still deal with. Now, is that a function? No, not even close. But if you took x and said, maybe this is the cosine of t, that is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you have something like y is equal to, you know, even t squared plus 3. What this is going to do, instead of going down and up and down and up, like cosine does, this controls the back and forth, getting Mario to go this way, and then this in the Y is going to cause it to go down, <laughs> and then it's going to come back up like this, and you're going to get these weird combinations. Like another one that's weird is this one, uh, sine 2t. And I think you may remember this from Honors Precalc. It, with this sine 2t, I think what it does is it does, you know, something like this. And you can just do all these crazy things that, you know, individually, these are functions, but together, they're a parametric equation that's a combination of those. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some basic things. <coughs> we're going to take slopes. So this is the first derivative. And the dy dx, you can kind of see what's happening. If you have x in terms of t, you can say, oh, this is dy dt like where I had that example, x is the cosine of t. The derivative of that is negative sine t, right? dt. Well, that would be dx dt. And then if we had y is equal to sine, let's say 2t, then you'd go cosine 2t times 2 dt. And the dt's would cancel, and then that would be my slope. So you take the derivative of this over the derivative of that. Make sense? Now, the second derivative is a little trickier. Um, if you go d dx of dy dx, that's the second derivative of, of um, yx. So what you do there is this is going to be split into dy dx divided by dx uh, so, so this is going to be dy dx dt, and then the other one is going to be dx dt. So d dy dx dt and dx dt. And so this is taking kind of a high ho thing going on here. It's going to have a high over ho, or a high ho, depends on what it looks like. And then it's over dx dt. So you do this. And then you divide by that. Okay, so that's one thing that you are going to be doing with parametrics. X in terms of T, Y in terms of T. You take the dy dt over dx dt. The second derivative is to take the derivative of that over dx dt. Now we get to the next part. And this part I like to call terms. Two terms you need to know about using parametrics. One is the speed is like Pythagorean theorem, change in x squared, change in y squared, square root. So the derivative of x of t squared, derivative of y of t squared. And then for acceleration, you're just going to take the derivative twice of x, derivative twice of y. These are the symbols that AP uses for uh, vectors, the vector of acceleration. Okay. So these are two terms, speed and acceleration. You don't get a packet of those. Okay, you'll have to memorize those. And this is where the BC people say, you know, come on, we put those pacifier uh, packets away. We can memorize these formulas. They're not that bad, but they are two formulas to memorize. The next one, 
to memorize is position. Now, position is different than area. Area is, a, is, a, is an actual area of a region. But what we're doing here is we're accumulating a distance. We're taking the uh, integral of the derivative, which is essentially x, and adding it to my original spot. So here's my start, and then here's my add-on. Okay, and that's for x. Here's my start. Here's my add-on for y. And that'll get me my new position. So you got to know where you start, and then you integrate the derivative to get what you added on from a to b. And this is a the start to b where you end. So that's position. There's one more integral, and this integral is in purple. This is the area. The area of anything is y dx, right? So if you took this y sine 2t, you'd put the y in here and the derivative of x in there. And so the integral from a to b of this parametric is going to be g f prime of t dt. That's a weird formula to memorize, but there's a formula for you. And then the last part, and this is the arc length. So position is a location that you're finding from a starting point, and uh, arc length is just the distance on there. So take your fingers, hold it in the air, and just move it horizontally. That's the new position for x. Okay, go back to that same point, move it vertically. That's the new position for y. So you can use this red to find the position. X zero, xa plus integral from a to b of the derivative of x dt. And do the same with y. But what if you wanted to take your fingers and find that strange distance of an arc? Make a little arc. You can find that length using calculus. And I'm just going to show you real quickly how we do that. If you take a point uh, here, uh, i minus 1, point i, and you just, it's on a curve, but we're just going to connect those two like this. Well, using the Pythagorean theorem, delta x squared plus delta y squared, isn't that just going to be this distance squared? Isn't that all it's going to be? So that's just Pythagorean theorem, nothing big there. But when we look at that distance, delta x squared plus delta y squared, we can change delta y knowing that dy dx is the change in y over the change in x. So what they did very cleverly is they moved this delta x to this other side. So now delta y is dy dx, or f prime of x, times delta x. And remember, that was squared. So when we square that, we'll have delta x squared plus f prime of x squared delta x squared. Factor out a delta x. Square root of delta x squared is delta x. And you're left with 1 plus the derivative, or dy dx, squared. That is crazy. That is the arc length of a curve. And all you need to know is dy dx, square it plus 1, square root, integrate, excuse me, integrate it from a to b dx. So those are all the formulas. And I'm going to make this one. I think I might have to go with the, um, the purple. Oh, let's go this yellow. Okay, so there's that one. So we have arc length, area in purple, position in red, terms in green, and derivatives in blue. And these are the formulas you're going to use for parametric AP problems, like this next one. Really? Right here. Uh, here are the questions. You decide which formulas to use and then use those with a calculator, three decimal places. Okay, that's the way AP does it. Okay, and so read these, and you see if you can interpret 
what formula to use for which one.